Join Twins K and Olu Taiwu, featured authors and speakers at the Vision, Identity, and Purpose seminars. Receive keys that will unlock the door to your discovery of purpose. This is your date with destiny. We want to thank all our partners for your prayers and financial support. We also want to extend this invitation to those of you watching who want to become vision partners to help us take this message around the world. To become a vision partner, call toll-free 1-844-334-2197 or visit visionforlifeministries.org. Welcome to the Vision Guided Life. So excited that you tuned in. I'm Olu Taiwo. I'm here with my brother Kay Taiwo. What an exciting program we have today. But before we go into the program, I want to give you some exciting news. For those of you who have Roku, if you have a Roku box, you can watch us streaming on Roku. Search for Vision for Life International and subscribe to our channel. It's a powerful, powerful opportunity that's opened up. Also, our friends in Nigeria, stay tuned as we're coming on radio in Nigeria, and we'll announce that as time goes on. But you can also visit our website at visionforlifeministries.org for any update. And finally, okay, exciting news that we also have is that the book, Agents of Change. Yes. Do you have anything to say about that book? It's a powerful book that is going to be life-changing because really God has designed us to be agents of change. He's designed us to have impact on the world around us. And so we need tools that would help us to reach the kind of people that God wants us to reach and not just reach them. There's a difference between reaching and having the tremendous impact. The Bible says that we should produce fruit and that our fruit would also remain. And that's God's goal for us. And it's not for some special person. No, everyone has been designed to be an agent of change. Absolutely. And, and can you just segue into the program yes. for today? Today we're going to be talking about the power of ideology. This is very, very critical. What is an ideology? An ideology is a formed belief that governs a person's way of life. A formed belief that governs a person's way of life. And an ideology manifests itself in various ways and in various uh, things of a mode of expression. It expresses itself in a society in which we live in. It expresses itself in the way we govern and we like to be governed. It, which also segues into politics, into our Christian faith. <laughs> Isn't it interesting, even in our Christian faith, the ideology that we hold on to before we come into our faith can be a stronghold. Mm. When the Bible says, casting down every imagination, imagination. and every high thing that exalts itself against, against the knowledge of God. So there is a force, a way of thinking, a mindset that can actually make us uh, captive to a way of thinking that hinders us from flowing with God's best for our lives. You know what I find when you say ideology is a formed belief. Yes. So it's so strong, if it governs your life, sometimes it can be conscious and unconscious. Absolutely. So a person forms a, a, a certain belief system that every waking moment, yes. their lives are governed by yes. those belief systems, Absolutely. which will determine their behavior, yes. their response to circumstances and to, and to other people. Would you say Abs so? Absolutely. And many times we don't realize the impact of our ideology until we're confronted with a moment that it requires us to change. And that's when we realize that this ideology actually can be a stumbling block, a stronghold. So when really the enemy of the new is the old, the enemy of the new, those who are, who are watching, the enemy of the new is the old. When God wants to do a new thing in your life, if you hold on to the past, it becomes a hindrance for what God wants to do. In fact, let's open our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 5, verse 36 to 39. It says here that then he, this is Jesus, spake a parable to them. He says, no one puts a piece from a new garment on an old one. Otherwise, the new makes a tear. And also the piece that was taken out of the new does not match the old. And it goes on further to say in verse 37, And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, 
or else the new wine will burst and wineskins and be spilled and the wineskins will be ruined. And in verse 30, it says, but new wine must be put in new wineskins and both are preserved. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires new. For he says, the old is better. Isn't that powerful? The old is better. You no, know, in the Greek, that very word that's used for better means the, the old is useful. The old is useful. Because when the new comes, what you are used to is useful because you're familiar with it. You're familiar with it. But because something is new, it means that it's something that you're not familiar with. There's a tendency to, re, to look at it as less valuable. Meanwhile, that new may be the transition into the greater things that God has for you. And this is that way you even see stumbling blocks. Yes. Even from the, how Jesus came into the world. Yes. From the Old Testament transitioning into the new. Yes. The people, in fact, Jesus making this very analogy, he's talking about himself. Yes. He came, the Bible says in John chapter 1, that through Moses came the law, but through Jesus Christ came grace, grace and, and truth. truth. Yes. And so when Jesus is operating in the earth, he's dealing with a people that have already had a formed belief. Absolutely. And he's bringing a new paradigm. Yes. And they are holding on to the old and yes. can embrace the new. Yes, absolutely. And that is so powerful. So Jesus, in using this illustration, was conveying the idea that the old really is a, is a is in some ways, it's, it's like something that you lean on, mm. depend on. And when God wants to move you into a new realm, into a new level, into a new dimension, into a new testament. Yes there's a tendency to lean on the old and it becomes an obstacle for the new. Even you see the, the ministry of the apostles, Paul encountered the old in his pursuit of the gospel and the new. In regions where he went to preach the gospel, he encountered those who wanted to remind them that the new was better. But Paul said, no, this is the new covenant. So those who did not see the value of the new became, they, they actually became a stumbling block in the ministry of Paul. You actually be the old. They said the old is better. Yes. But, so Paul brought a New Testament. New Testament. And the people that embraced the old yes. were saying, no, had a no, problem, had a problem with embracing it. the new. And, so the yeah. familiar can become an obstacle for what appears to be unfamiliar. Yes. The old can be an obstacle for what is a new thing that God is doing. So how do we make a transition if we have an ideology? In fact, let's look at our world today yes. in the area of religions. Yes. We have religions that are actually in their ideology. Yes. They say, destroy the ones that do not believe like you. Yes. And they will actually strap bombs on themselves. Yes. yes. Will go, go into places and just... Yes. Wreak ha wreak havoc. Wreak havoc. Yes. They, 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 I mean, look at our whole world today. Yes. It's happening all around us. Yes. How you say that ideology, how does that feed into those actions? You see, just like the, it says about the, you can't put new wine in old wineskins. The wineskins will burst. Ideologies of certain types are right, really incompatible. You can't mix them together. No, you have to drop one ideology and embrace another ideology. They can't coexist. And for the believer, yes. the Bible says in Romans chapter 1 that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. We put off the old by the renewing of our mind because our minds are like tape recorders. They have recorded a way, a pattern, a, a, res a, a, a response to life and how things ought to be you know, addressed for so long. And then when we come to God's word and he teaches us a new way to approach that issue, there's a tendency to hold on to our life experiences. And we sometimes elevate our experiences above what God says about us. So you see Christians that have been believers for years and they don't move ahead, they don't advance, and they don't fulfill God's plan for their lives. Does it make uh, the plan of God non-existent? Does it make the plan of God of no, of no power? God's plan and God's word is always powerful, but it might not manifest itself in us if we don't embrace what his word, what his word says. So God is all powerful, but still we have to renew our minds to embrace God's plan for our lives. Yeah, Romans 12 is a very powerful chapter. 
Paul starts that chapter by saying, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, yes, holy and acceptable, and acceptable to God. God which is your reasonable, reasonable service. service. And be not conformed to this world, be but be transformed. Which means there two. has to be yes. an exchange. There has to be a conscious yes. movement away from conformity to the world yes. and embracing God. Yes. Or else you can't be transformed. Absolutely. Because the, the systems of this world are in direct opposition to Absolutely. the system and mindset of God. That is so true. And that's why, as we were talking about agents of change, the book coming out, how can you be an agent of change? The very word change there means that the way things are might have been good at some point, but there's, there's time to move on. Or the way things have been are not good, it's time to move to what is better. So for us to be an agent of change, first of all, we have to be changed ourselves. ourselves Our minds have to be renewed. We have to embrace God's voice and what God says about us. When we embrace it without any encumbrance to, for us to allow God to flow through us, then we're going to go and fulfill our mission. And in fulfilling our mission, we will encounter people that have those strongholds, but it's when they're exposed to the light of God's word that their lives will be radically transformed. Isn't it also interesting? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the Bible says that uh, we, were, it says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Actually, Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. A twin scripture, but dealing with it different in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 4, 4, that it tells us that uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm. Casting down imaginations, imaginations. Yes. and every high thing that exalts, exalts itself, itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience, to the obedience of, Christ. of Christ, bringing every thought captive, mm. which means if you're going to bring a thought captive, it has to be a conscious decision. Absolutely. Because the philosophies of this world, the ideologies yes. of this world, yes. don't just, because you say it's a formed belief. Yes. If it's a formed belief, it means, <laughs> by, by definition, that something is formed, it is be, become solidified. Yes. So it's, it's not going to take just a casual uh, uh, response. Yes. It's going to have to be a radical response with Absolutely. the word of God. Absolutely. And that's where even as agents of change, look at Peter. Peter goes to the house of Cornelius, but before he goes there and has that encounter, he had formed beliefs that were in the Old Testament even mindset. Even though he had received Christ. Even though he had received Christ. Even though he walked with Christ and Christ had risen and the church was born on the day of Pentecost, he goes 10, it, it, scholars actually say this is 10 years after the encounter with Cornelius, but yet he still did not see that God had uh, his, his salvation plan extend to the Gentiles. So it was a, it was a process of, of God renewing his mind by that encounter to make him see that indeed God's uh, vision for salvation included every person, Jew and Gentile alike. And you know what I see from what you're saying there? If you're really going to change an ideology, for instance, a person has a destructive ideology, just like in, this, in the case of, of Peter. It took a supernatural yes. move of God where yes. the light bulbs came on, yes. right? Absolutely. So it's not something that you explain away. You can't explain away an ideology no. or just have a debate. You ever seen places people debate back and forth and everybody leaves, nobody's yes. changed? Yes. It's going to take, and that's why if we're going to be agents of change, if we're going to uh, use the power of God to, to see transformation in society, then it, it's not just explanation. Yes. There has to be revelation. There has to be revelation. Revelation of Absolutely. the Spirit of God. And so it's not just head knowledge. It's not. It's a heart issue. Yes. It's a heart issue. Yes. You see, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. The, how, the heart really is what gives weight the to driving the, the, the driving force of our lives. And so the Bible also says, guard your heart with all, all diligence, for so out of it are the issues of life. Of life. With one translation says, forces, forces or wellspring of life. Yes. So it, the heart issue. So the transformation that takes place, it has to also be a God thing. God has to be involved in that transformation. It's not just going through mechanical steps. It's not mechanical. It's not. It's, it, for a deeper work, it has to be God involved from the inside out. That change, that transformational change, is not a change that comes from the outside in. It comes from the inside, inside and it comes onto the outside. 
very important that uh, we put the God factor. Absolutely. Because without him, we can do nothing. Yes. You can't change yourself. You can't change society. It's God's power that does the transformation. Absolutely. It's God's power that gets the work done. So we have to be in cooperation with God True. and get God a, a God idea if we're going to make a transformation of society. Yes, so true. those formed beliefs, people, I mean, our society today is becoming very progressive. Absolutely. And is moving far away from the source who is God. Yes. They're questioning everything God today. Yes. Ideologies that people will, will the, the devaluing of life, the devaluing of the sanctity of marriage mm. is happening all yes. rapidly before us. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So it's going to take the, them seeing us, yes. agents of change in, right. in our society, as people whose who's, the love of God is on us, first of all, that's part of our theology that makes us different, right? Yes. It says, for by this shall all men know, know that you're, that you're my disciples, disciples, by your love one to yes. another. When that love is seen and it yes. emanates from us into society, they have to but kind of pause and say there's something different about these people yes. and they want to inquire and find out more. Right, and I think the danger sometimes that we what we do is that because we see things wrong in society, we have a preoccupation for what is dark, what is evil, what is ungodly, and we don't become the light that God wants us to be. It's interesting that Jesus says that let your light so shine, which means the degree to which light shines is dependent on you. The light is there, yes. but it has to be well position for it to have its far-reaching effect. So you is an understood subject. Yes. You let, let your, your light, light so shine. So shine. Means you have a lot to do. In other words, God's light is already in you. Yes. But you are a, 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 you are a, vital, a vital entity yes. in allowing that light to shine. Absolutely. You can hinder that light. Yes. Or you can allow that light to be yes. uninhibited, right? And the more you have a formed belief and ideology, that's why ideologies are powerful because that ideology, wrong ideology, that Peter had kept him constrained from being all that God wanted him to be until the illumination of God's Spirit came upon him. In that case, revelation, because he held on to the Old Testament. He was a propagator of a New Testament, but he didn't really fu fully understand the wide implication of the message he carried. So revelation also is progressive. Peter had to learn that there's part of this message that he didn't fully understand. And on this day with Cornelius, he now understood that God is no respecter of persons. So imagine for 10 years, he was preaching a message that God elevated these people and he didn't have so much value isn't, for these people. Something? Contrary to the message of God. So what you're saying is that somebody could be going for years. Absolutely. For a generation. Yes. Haven't you seen that in our society too, that... Sometimes something that was happening in one generation, even though things have changed and have improved, yes. people will still hold on to what happened 50 years ago. They have yes. a formed belief yes. that the whole world is yes. against me. Yes. I can't accomplish something. And yes. guess what? Yes. They stay in that mode yes. because of that belief system. Yes. I'm thinking about an analogy somebody once gave about a, a, a chained animal, a dog. Mm. A dog was chained and the dog kept running and it will always reach the limit of the chain, mm. and it will, it will stop. Yes. But one day, they removed the chain from the dog, and that dog still will not go beyond the limits Absolutely. that it once responded to while the chain was yes. there. Because in, in the dog's mind, a formed belief is that I can't move beyond, beyond the limits. this limit. Yes. Even when the limit ceases. Even when the limit has been removed. Has been removed. So that's a mind game. That's mm -hmm. a mind thing. So mm -hmm. if your mind... Mm -hmm. is really changed yes. and it, it affects your belief system Absolutely. and your, 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 your outward expression. Yes. So definitely you need to renew the mind. Absolutely. Retrain the mind to walk in the liberty that's in Jesus Christ. And to, re to retrain the mind, you need an update. If you, you want to use the, the, the terminology of technology, yes. uh, 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 of a mobile phone, they come up with a new op update, right? They, when you even do the update, it takes some time to clear the way for the new software yes. to take its, the, the place of the former. And what do you normally do when you get an update? There's an anticipation that what I'm about to see is going to be better, better than what better. I... Better, yes. Otherwise, it's not an update. Yes. An update means it's an improvement, improvement from, the from the previous. Yes. But if you're so attached to the previous, you won't benefit from the new yes. updates that, yes. are, that, are, that are about to be uh, on that platform that you have. So the same way, when we, we have to trust God, God cannot mismanage our lives. 
God cannot mismanage your life, okay? Because God is our maker. He knows what we need. And when he made plans from the foundations of the earth, it's a good plan, a plan that has an expected end, a plan to bring us into the fullness of his goodness. So when we embrace his plan and trust him, what he says in his word is going to change our lives for the better. And then we will be positioned to be change agents to impact the lives of others. And I want to encourage someone out there, perhaps you have been told you will never amount to anything. You've been told you will never accomplish anything. And generations in your family, you, you, it seems to be that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. But we, we, we're talking about a supernatural revelation of God, where God opens the eyes of your understanding to change your belief system. Not just about changing your world, but change your belief system about how you see yourself. See that God loves you with an everlasting love. God has a plan for your life. It's a, it's a good plan because he's a good God. So you need to begin to sit back and just say, Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. Show me the plans you have for me. The Bible says his plans are for good, not for, not for evil, to bring us to a, a future and a hope. God has a plan for your life, and he has, he, that plan is not something you, you just uh, make up or it's something you just try and, and, and find out on your own. He's already provided the help. Just embrace his plan. That's very powerful, and that's very powerful because many times, even as Christians, after we walk our, we start the, this journey of our walk with God, mm. there's a tendency also now to start focusing on the evil and the wicked in the world, and we take our eyes off the message. Mm. The word gospel means good, good news. news, which means... Stop, stop there. Yes. The word gospel means good news, but have you seen many times what Christians a propagate? Their preoccupation on what is wrong, what is evil, what is not right. No, the evil is there, but who is a bearer of good news? The children of God who are born of God are the ambassadors to bring the good news. So just proclaiming that things are wrong, things are wrong, it doesn't mean that you, it, it, actually, you're not focusing on the message. Your message is a remedy to what's wrong. You're not supposed to just parrot what is wrong. And sometimes there's a preoccupation. And really, I'll, I'll put it really straight and blunt. When we have a preoccupation for what is wrong, we don't know our message. That's very true. Powerful. We do not That's powerful, but know true. our message. Because our message is not a preoccupation what is wrong, we are supposed to bring the light of God into that dark world. And it's not just talking about the problem, it's trusting God to give us wisdom to address the problem. Exactly. Exactly. Okay? Exactly. Right? Isaiah 60 comes to mind. Yes. That very scripture says, arise, shine, your, your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible goes on to say that darkness will cover the earth, Gross, gross darkness, darkness to people, but that's not the issue. You're not preoccupied with the darkness that covers the world or the gross darkness that covers the people. No. It says that the Lord's glory will be seen upon you. Yes. And, and it says Gentiles will come to your light. They will come to you. They're in darkness. So Gentiles oh, are yeah. not drawn to you just because you proclaim or diagnose the problem that they already know they have. <laughs> it's true. The real good news is that there is a way out of that problem, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And it has a belief system. That's why we even as believers, we need to renew our minds. You need to renew your mind. I need to renew my mind daily to understand that the message we have is a superior message. There's no match to the message. The love of God, nothing can top it. Mm. Nothing can top it. And we have good news is that God himself came to us. He came to us first. The Bible says that the word became flesh. And before the foundations of the world, Jesus was slain. This, I mean, God planned this already. That's good news. So why on earth will we be preoccupied with the negatives around us? Why are we experts at what we're against when we should be experts at what we're for? Absolutely. That's a very powerful word. I think that's, and that takes a paradigm shift. Absolutely. That takes a shift in ideology. If your ideology is rooted in what you are against, you're always aware, conscious of what you're against, 
and you are barely aware of what you're for, then it takes, it takes a transformation to leave that mindset, that framework, into a framework that embraces, okay, this is what we're against, but I'm consciously aware and focused on what I'm for. Jesus didn't send us into the world to condemn the world because God didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. Yeah. So the preoccupation is the so with the solution, not with what is wrong. And isn't that interesting also because when you have that kind of philosophy that you're against everything, it almost it creates an animosity between the people you're trying to reach and, yes. and you. And that's why they look at the church. It becomes an us against them. But Absolutely. Jesus never operated his earthly ministry yes. as an us against them. Yes. He really came, I am for you. Yes. That's absolutely true. Isn't it true? Absolutely true. And that's how Jesus operated. And look at formed beliefs. Jesus actually gave us a glimpse into mm. formed beliefs. When the, the woman that was caught in adultery, she was about to be stoned. And they kept, if you read the scriptures in John chapter, and I think it's John chapter eight. 8, they kept taunting him, tempting him, the Bible says, to see, because they wanted him to say something contradictory to the law. What did Jesus say? He says, those who are without sin cast, cast the, first, the first stone. And the Bible says from the eldest to the, to the least, <laughs> they yes. dropped the stones yes. and they left. Now, what was Jesus doing? Jesus knew the law, but his preoccupation was not on judgment. His preoccupation was on redemption. Yes. So he turns yes. to the woman and says, where are your accusers? He says, they all, they all left. He says, <laughs> Neither do I condemn you. Go, and, Go sin no and sin no more. So his message was focus, preoccupation on redemption. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So his focus was on life, not on judgment or death. And that's very crucial. So as we talk about ideology, we have to put that in mind, that the ideology of the believer in Jesus Christ, the ideology of the believer in Jesus Christ is redemption. We should look to bring redemption to our world, right? Absolutely. Kate? That's absolutely powerful. Very true. Thank you for tuning into the Vision Guided Life. Remember, transformation, transformation takes, takes place through identification, identification with, with Christ. Christ. God bless you. God bless you. To have sustainable impact, you must possess vision, character, and a culture of excellence. Kay and Olu would like you to have this special offer the Leadership and Life Empowerment Tri Pack. This package includes three DVDs from a leadership conference before a live audience and a workbook that is sure to inform, clarify, and inspire you to advance in your God-given area of assignment. This offer is conducive for individuals, leadership teams, or church groups. With a gift of just $45 or more, this offer can be yours. Call 1-844-334-2197 or visit visionforlifeministries.org. Want to invite Kay and Olu Taiwo to speak to your church, conference, or event? Call 1-844-334-2197 or write them at contact at vflm.org.